Hi, in this video, I'll be walking you through on how to add a view counter as well as minute read to your Next.js 14 blog. As you can see here, this is what the final result will look like. We have this blog and we have a bunch of posts. So if I click on one of the posts, it will redirect me to that specific post. And if I go back, you could see if I refresh my page, the view counter has incremented. So yes, we are going to be going and building this out. The tech stack that we will be using for this project is Next.js 14 with app router up slash Redis for a database to store our view counts as well as Tailwind CSS for styling. And we will be hosting this on Vercel. So let's get to it. So on the left, I have VS Code open with my starter repository, which you could find in the description as well as in my corresponding blog post for this video. I just wanted to preface that this was inspired by Andreas's blog post, which you could find here. And he goes through on how to add a view counter using Upstash Redis for your Next.js blog. This was written in April 3rd, 2023, and there are a couple updates since then, especially Next.js 14. So yes, I'll be mentioning to you what you need to do there. And a couple prerequisites, you need an Upstash account as well as a Next.js 14 project. If you have a project that you want to add this to, then you can either go ahead and add this specific package that you will need, which will be using. If not, if you just want to follow along with me, you could go to this repository and go ahead and fork it or download it. Yeah, follow along. As you can see, there's two branches, final and starter. I am going to be starting with the starter one and eventually we will get to the final result. And yeah, just wanted to give you a little bit of a heads up. So let's go back to our project and we are going to do a bun I. We are using the bun package manager. And then after that, we are going to go do a bun Dev. So now we got our development server running. We have local host. If I refresh this, you could see our blog showing up right now. And as you can see, we do not have the view counter or the minute read added yet. But before moving forward, let's go ahead and create our database in Upstash Redis so we could have that all set up. So we could go to the Upstash website and go ahead and log in. Once we are logged in, you can see there are a couple options at the top. We want to make sure that we have the Redis tab selected and we are going to go ahead and create database. I'm just going to name it Next.js 14 blog and select a region as well as click create and then it's going to go ahead and create our database. Then once we have our database created, we could go down and go to the REST API section, go and click on .env, copy this and paste it into our env file. Once we have our environmental variables inside our application, we should be good. If you want, we could reset our server. Nice, so now we could go back to posts. We have our upstash redis environmental variables in. We followed these instructions. This is the folder structure and we need to create a couple of these files. But before we move forward, I wanted to give a high level explanation on exactly what we are going to be building. So here, this is regarding the increment view count part. So whenever a user visits a blog post page, we want it to increment. So how does that work? So we have this path, right? Posts backslash post one, post one is the slug name. And this is being rendered on the server since we are using Next.js. And with Next.js, you're allowed to have client components within server pages. So we have this client component called report view. And within here, we have a use effect. Using Next.js, you cannot have a use effect within a server component. That's why we have to use a client component. So whenever a user visits the page, then we want to trigger this fetch command. We are fetching our API that we have inside our app directory called app backslash increment. So we are calling this path, which is then triggering the upstash Redis database. We are checking if this slug exists. If it doesn't, then we are going to add this key, which is this right here, which is being passed through our API. And we are incrementing the value of that key within our database. So this is how the whole process is. So this is how it's being incremented. Whenever you refresh the page, then it's going to increment the view count one more time because it's dependent on how many times a user is visiting that page and loading the first time. If you refresh it, right, you're reloading the page, which is also adding a view to your value in your Upstash Redis database. 
So you saw this happening in the demo that we saw earlier from the beginning. So that's how that is working here. So this is for the increment portion. We also want to fetch our data. So let's see, how do we get our view count? So here's some diagram and how we get our view count. So you can see we have two sections, right? We have one for posts and one for posts backslash whatever your slug name is. So there's two places where we are trying to fetch data. The place where we have all the posts in one page and we have all the views for each post as well as when we navigate inside our slug page or our specific post page we also want to grab the views there as well so this is how it's being done we for the post page when we visit it then we call a redis.mget command which is fetching all our keys with a specific slug value so you can see pages post a slug and it's joining them this is the key and it's looking for that key inside our upstash redis database if it's found then it's going to pass the value back into our page and it's going to display it same goes with our post backslash slug name or post one where this one is a lot simpler because when we go to that specific page inside our slug page, we have our slug available. So all we need to do is just fetch it. We don't have to go through an array of posts like previously with all posts because we only have one post that we are trying to fetch data from. And then we are going to go do the same thing, go to upstash redis find the key and then return the value that we have for that specific post. So that's how it's being done in a high level view. I hope this might, maybe not, might not make sense, but um, I think as you're coding it, I think it starts to click together. So I just wanted to display this first before we move forward. So now that we have a better understanding, let's go ahead and start coding it. We are going to start with the increment view count. So that means we have to go inside our slug page and then also we need to create this client component called view.tsx. So let's go ahead and do that. View.tsx, we are going to create a functional component just like that. And then we are going to name it report view. Inside here, like I mentioned earlier, this has to be a client component. So we're going to do use client as well as we want use effect. So let's go ahead and add use effect here. And the next thing we want to do is we need to pass the slug into this component so we could then pass it through our API into our upstash Redis database. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's replace this with this. So as you could see, now we are passing in the slug as a parameter. The next thing we want to do is add our use effect and fetch our API within that use effect. So let's go ahead and add that. You see, we have our use effect. We are fetching our API increment, which we have not created yet, which is the next thing that we need to do. We have our post method. We are passing in the slug into the body of our API call, and then we don't need to return anything. So we could change this to null. So then that's it for our view component. We need to go and put that inside our page. So we could go here, let's do import report view. And let's see, this needs to go inside here. Now, since this is a component, we need to wrap this with this. And then this is giving us this because we need to go back here. This is not default. We are just exporting it. So let's go do that. And that should fix that. And we also need to pass in our slug. So the slug that we are going to be using is this slug, the post slug from our post that we have right here. Let's go ahead and do that and that should be all right. So now that we have this all added, now we need to go and create our API. So let's go inside our app directory, create a new folder called API dash increment. And then within here, we need to create a route. So route.ts. I'm going to go ahead and paste in the code and walk through it because this code I got from this blog post earlier uh, from this section, I just changed. I believe he had this as a config equals runtime edge. This has to be updated just to runtime because of the newest Next.js update. So let's walk through it. So we need next request and next response from the next server. We need the Redis package. We also need the Redis initialization as well as setting it to runtime on edge. We have our post command. We are retrieving the body from the API recall that we just sent, right? We just sent the slug. We are initializing our slug, checking if the slug exists within the body. And if it isn't, then we need to give it an error. And we are fetching our IP from our request. If it does exist, then we need to hash it to secure it because we don't want to, like it says in the comments, we don't want to store it directly in our database. 
Also, we want to check if it's new, if there are any duplicates. And then lastly, you want to increment the page in the end. So that's how we achieve this right here, right? We're fetching it and then we're incrementing it in the end. So now, since we have our API inside, we could go back to our page and let's see what happens if I refresh this page. If we go inside our database, which we could go right here and refresh this, you could see we just added in a value. We have pages view. This is our key with the name of our slug, deep dive into technology, which is in the same one here. If I go back here and go within here, and then let's see, refresh it. Then you could see another person has viewed it as well. Right now we have it, it's saying that we viewed it twice. Um, and I don't know why it does that. It does that in development, but in production, it doesn't do that, which is weird. So I think right now, whatever, it's fine. So let's now add our view into this page. Let's get our views. And that would be this section right here, right in our, in our diagram. We are doing this portion right here. We want to use this call. So let's go to that page. We are going to get our views and we don't have Redis, so we need to go get Redis. So it's the same Redis that we used here, just like this, paste it within here, our Redis package, as well as our initialization of Redis. And now we have our views. So let's go ahead and display it. Let's add another thing right here. If we do a span and do views, and let's see what happens if we go here. It should show up. There's a number that shows up right here, but it's giving us an error. Not the same. Let's try it again. If I go inside here, that error goes away. So you just have to refresh it. Now from the demo, you saw there's a little dot in between. So let's go ahead and create that. And then now you can see it shows up. We have that right here. And then right next to it, probably want views or something. So there we go. So that's how we got the views. Now let's go ahead and also add the views to our main post page right here. It doesn't show up yet, right? So let's go back here. We want to go to the top. Let's import Redis. Should be good. And then also initialize our Redis right here. So we're in our post page and we need to get all our views for each one of our posts, right? So. Let me go ahead and add it right here. So here's what we need to create. We have the views. We are creating a map, going through all our posts and creating keys, which we are going to put inside our record and then the number associated with it. And then in the end, this is going to return an array of all the views of each of the blog posts. And we're going to pass this to our post component. So we could go ahead and do views like that. And then we need to go inside our post component right here where we're showing all of our posts. We also need to add views as a parameter. And then after that, we want to go down and find where we are displaying all of our posts and go to that specific section similar to here. Let's see, let's go back. And then right here is where we want to display our views. So let's go here. Let me actually, let me actually go back to our slug and then let's copy this section right here, paste it in here. This is not going to work because this is from the other one. But if we refresh the page, right, we got the dot. The next thing we want to do is show the views. So now since views is an array, the value that we want to get right now, the key is the slug. So we want to pass the slug within the array to get the correct value. So if we do that, then if we refresh the page, it should show us the amount of views that we have. We use the get command. We are going through upstash Redis. We got all the values and then we're putting it back inside post. And then the post page is passing it into the post component to then display it here. So this is how we add the view counter. So we are now done with the view counter. Now that we got the hard part out of the way, we could go ahead and continue with adding minute read to our blog post. So let's start with the main posts area. So that would be inside this page right here in our root post directory. Now within this page, we have posts. So actually we need to go inside posts. So let's go there. We're going to go to the section where we added the views and just copy the span one more time. So we can add that little circle right there. So we have an indicator that we want to add something right next to it. Now we want to add another span. Now this span is going to return how long each blog post is. So let's actually add that text right here. So let's do minute read like an eight minute read. So I'm going to read and then right here is where we are going to add our variable. And what we want to do is in this page, we have access to the post. 
and the post contains the MBX content. Now, when it comes to calculating the minute read, it's not too difficult. There's a formula for it. So let me show you the function that I created and we'll walk through and show you how to use. So inside our utils file in our lib directory, we're going to open this up. I have a function called calculate reading time. So we are passing in our MDX content. We want to define the average reading time words per minute. Right now I have it set it to 200 words per minute. I guess that's the average. And then we want to strip the MDX tags and count the words as you see in the comment section right here. So we are stripping down the context and then we are getting the word count. And this is what we do to do that. Now, once we have the word count, how many words are in the blog post, we want to divide it by words per minute. Then we do a math.seal, which returns the greatest or equal to number argument. So we don't get like decimals or whatever. And then that's how we calculate our reading time. So all you need to do is import this function into the page that you want to show the reading time. So let's say for this page, we want to import calculate reading time. So let's do that here. We already have the utils. Let's do calculate reading time. We're going to take this function. We're going to go down here, calculate reading time, and we're going to pass in the post, which from this section right here, we have posts. We are mapping it through it. So like I said, I'm assuming that you already have this set up, or if not, you already have this initial starting repo. And then we are going to do post.content, and then that should return to us a value. So right now, I mean, one minute say it makes sense, right? Because these are short. So this is the returning value. And we also want to include it on the slug page. So let's go ahead and copy this. We could go inside our slug page, which is in here. And we're going to go to this section right below and add it just like that. We have to import this function. So let's do that. And then we should be good. It should show up just like that. And then we got to refresh it. Okay. So I just restarted my server and tried it again. And now it should be working fine. So we were able to add minute read. That's how simple that was, right? It was just that one function and passing in the MDX content and doing whatever I needed to do to calculate it. Now, if let's say I want to test where, uh, let's try this one. If we just duplicated a bunch of times, right? Then we go back. Let's see that, that minute, right? That minute read got increased because the word count has increased. So it says this should take about three minutes to read. So that's cool, you know, to see. Now, the last thing we want to do is host this on Vercel. So let's go ahead and do that. Make sure that this project is in your GitHub and we are going to connect our GitHub to Vercel. So let's make this. So if we go to the Vercel dashboard, let's go to add new project. We're going to add a new project and that project is going to be the next JS blog that we were just working on. We're going to go ahead and add our environmental variables. So let's go back to our project copy these environmental variables and paste it in within Vercel just like that and go ahead and deploy. We're going to wait a few minutes. So now that we've deployed our website, we could go ahead and check it out. We could go here to our dashboard. We could click on the URL and we'll be taken to our live blog page. So this is what the blog page looks like. We could clear up these views if we want. We could go back to upstash Redis, just delete everything that is in here to get a fresh view. I'd recommend creating another project just for development and then one for production. But for now, since it's just an example, I think this is fine. We go ahead and refresh it. Everything should be zero. We click on it and then we refresh the page. We got one view in there. Oh, it says two. So I think I refreshed it too early. If we go back, refresh it here. There we go. We got one view. It's a little bit, you know, one off view or whatever, but I think it's fine. You know, it works. It works. Okay. Um, that's it for this video. It was a little bit of a longer one. Haven't made a video in a second, so please forgive me. But yes, let me know what you thought of it. I'm probably going to add more stuff to this template and let me know if there's anything that you do want me to add or go over. But yeah, thanks for watching. I hope that it was useful and yep, everything will be in the description below and yeah, until next time.